designs, you know, I mentioned last night that the uh, dance is a choreographed prayer. And then uh, the, the culminating design uh, that I've created, one of them, is a design of the eagle. And so uh, I got this idea from hearing the story, and I wanted to briefly just share that story. And the story is, uh, uh, I heard this about oh, God, probably 35 years ago or more, and it was, uh, uh, there was uh, some elders traveling around different communities. They came up to my little community, Wakpala, in South Dakota, and they shared this uh, story as it was time because uh, it had to do with this uh, a famous, a famous individual known as uh, Tashuki Wichko, or uh, Crazy Horse. They say in English, they don't know what they say in English. It's not a good translation, but anyway. That's what they say. Uh, anyway, so. Uh, he, uh, before he was killed in 1877, he went up on this mountain. Uh, it's been a place of pilgrimage for probably tens of thousands of years. But he went up on this mountaintop and uh, he was praying. And on the fourth day of uh, praying and fasting, he had a vision of uh, becoming an eagle. So uh, last night I, I made uh, one of the, I get the design I did with uh, 28 hoops. The, the hoops on the bottom was a tail, and this part up here is the, is the wings. And so in, uh, in this vision, so I wanted to just recreate that or, or show that. So in this vision, he became an eagle. And in this state, he was flying out over the world. So as he flew out over the world, in this vision, he uh, he saw the all the hoops of humanity. I think I mentioned it last night. But that's one of the uh, uh, one of the uh, significances or uh, one of the, uh, symbolic, emblematic of the hoop that represents people, human beings. We can represent unity, and that's the design of perfection. That's the way uh, it's a sign of God. So then, so then, he, what he saw were all the diverse kindreds. Uh, but in his in his vision, he saw them all as hoops of humanity uh, arrayed and distributed all over the world. And he saw that just like just like the sun when it shines in different parts of the world, why all the vegetation is different. Like the sun shines here, you see all different colors, and uh, like we're sitting with the prairie. Variegated uh, flowers, uh, variegated um, uh, uh, colors, and beauty. You saw all over the world uh, that as the center of reality would shine amongst different tinges of humanity. The result was all oh, this incredible beauty, all the color, the music, the dance, the ways of expression. And this is what he saw in his vision as he's flying. But then, of course, he saw it was all from one source. But then he saw that um, the uh, Darkness over overshadowed the world. And all this, uh, I guess, I guess it'd be egotism or uh, forces of uh, materialism, uh, uh, ego-driven rulers wanting to control mankind began to uh, uh, cast their grab or began to seize the control of the world. So he saw this darkness oversweep the world, and he saw that blotted out that light from the people. And as this happened, while well, the people began to uh, be plunged into this darkness of despair, and he saw that uh, like brother against brother, family against family, nation against nation, he saw the uh, war, the he saw just carnage and conflagration everywhere, and he saw that uh, like every heart broken, every uh, every mother forlorn, every child destitute, and he saw that uh, all mankind was just in this condition of darkness, covered in dust. And he began to cry and thought, well, there's no future, there's no hope. He saw his future generations in his condition. And uh, he just, he just he, in despair, he just cried and wept. But then he thought, it suddenly flashed his mind, he thought, if only people could see how beautiful we are, the, our reality, he thought, if only we could see this. And then he had that thought, and he began to pray this way. And when he prayed this way, he could feel that... Uh, Power of his prayer is just like the wind beneath his wings, so then he began to fly upward. He began to fly up, and he went up uh, through the uh, darkness beyond it. And he looked up, he flew up so high he could see the light of a new day coming into the world. And he saw this light begin to uh, dispel all that darkness. And he saw all the people who were just uh, like covered in dust and darkness on the world, all scattered and was lifeless. He saw that light come into their midst, he saw them begin to stir a little bit, and they began to like uh, shake the, uh, kind of shake the dust off themselves, 
and they began to reach out, they began to reach out and kind of uh, help each other, assist each other, and they began to create a beautiful design. So that design is the one I made that last night. This one to explain that a little bit further. Uh, I saw that made that design, uh, and you know, all the people that design was put down into this world, the uh, the uh, uh, hoop of many hoops, the hoop of many hoops. And uh, so that was a little story that I was uh, uh, wanting to, I heard different stories that helped me to uh, try and create that. I remember uh, a few years ago, before, uh, uh, there was a, there's, there's a, in North Dakota, there's, there's a little Baha'i community up on the, on the, in the exact geographic center of North America, it's called uh, Turtle Mountain. And uh, the uh, geographic center is also, there's the Peace Gardens right there, it's on the border of North Dakota and Manitoba. And uh, uh, one, one of the uh, elders, uh, he was in his upper 80s, just before he passed away a few years ago. He, uh, we all got, got in this place, and he had a, he wanted to uh, share something to, uh, for all the Baha'is there. A lot of, he was a Baha'i himself. His name was Francis Cree. Anyway, he, uh, he said, uh, he, he told this whole story, and in a way I try and recreate that story with that dance as well. But the story that he told was, uh, uh, it's, a, it's, like a, it's like a creation story. He says that when the world was destroyed by this great flood, he said uh, uh, a heavenly being known as uh, Gichigoku, a spider, descended from the heavens. And of course, all the animals were just swimming around, floating around. There's no firmament, no place for them to, 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 to survive. So then this uh, Gichigoku, or spider woman, she uh, commanded the animals to dive down beneath the waters. And grasp uh, and grasp uh, the earth. Try to get a piece of the earth from beneath beneath the waters. So they all plunged beneath the waters, striving to fulfill her command, her, her, her bidding. So they all began to try and get beneath the go down below the water to get a piece of the earth. But one by one, they uh, they all turned back, and began to resurface. All but one. And after a long, long time had passed, there's something. Came up to the top, something floated up to the top, and uh, it was a little muskrat, a little muskrat. So then the sky woman commanded them to go over and uh, to pry its paws open. I guess the little muskrat had been underwater so long that you know rigor mortis set in, and uh, it had, um, how they say it just it, 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 its little limbs were locked in place. But anyway, it was very difficult that they pried its little paw open, and there, in the middle of his little paw, there was a little speck of dirt in there. Those speck of dirt. So then, uh, Sky Woman very carefully uh, reached out and took this little speck of dirt, and she began to pray with it. And she faced each, each of the four directions, and in her prayer, which was so sincere, she envisioned all the colors, all the sound, all the powers, all the all the the fine elements in each of the, all the powers in each direction. And her prayer was so sincere, she began, tears began to flow from down her eyes. And over her cheeks like this. And as she she prayed so uh, with such sincerity. And then when she finished her prayer, she finished her prayer, uh, she uh, there was a turtle uh, swimming by. So then she uh, she took that little piece of dust and she put it on the uh, back of the turtle, in the middle of the back of the turtle. And as she did when she did that, a little tear came down and touched that little piece of uh, uh, speck of dust, dirt. And uh, when that happened, why then uh, the land began to spread out. The land began to spread out in all different directions. And the land, it, it, everything appeared just as she had prayed for it. And uh, so um, this is what uh, Francis, his name was Francis Creed, that's what he said, uh, the reason why they call this, uh, uh, these Ojibwe people call this continent uh, Turtle Island. Turtle Island. And, um, but uh, this elder, he said, now, he said, uh, this story, he said, I want you to remember two parts of the story. He was a Baha'i, but he, he said he, he, he wanted the Baha'is to uh, re recall two parts of the story. And so the first part, he said, that he wanted everybody to remember was the, uh, the little muskrat, the little animal that succeeded. And he said that, you know, all the other animals, they, all the animals received the same summons. They received the same uh, call order. But each in turn had attempted, made an initial attempt, but then 
they each uh, had gotten to a point where they, in fulfilling that commandment, they realized that if they were to uh, continue on, they were going to die, they were going to perish. So they all turned back in time. They failed to accomplish that goal. But the Silver Muscat would do the same thing, but he must have gone, realized that he, he was not going to survive. But, uh, but uh, his, uh, his drive to fulfill that summons overrode that his survival. So he realized that he had to accomplish it. He had to succeed. And so he must have kept on swimming and swimming and swimming until uh, with his last breath, last ounce of strength, he must have pushed off and then somehow managed to reach that bottom uh, through momentum, through trajectory, just reach it and grab someone that there and at that moment passed away. But he seized firmly on that little speck of uh, land beneath the waters and just floated gradually up. And in that time, uh, stiffened up. So this is what uh, this elder said. He said, if you really want to accomplish anything, you know, especially like, like the Baha'i, members of the Baha'i faith, you have this great task of renewing the world, bringing the world back, and recreating this world. He says, you have to be prepared to give it all. Give everything for that. If you believe, if you believe what you say you believe, you have to be prepared to give it all. Give up whatever it takes to accomplish that goal. So he said, that's the first thing. And uh, this is a man, he was illiterate, see? He was, he was illiterate, basically illiterate. And he didn't speak English very well. It's very broken English, but I think he understood it a lot, see? So anyway, uh, he said the second thing about the story, he says this, this, uh, this guy woman, Gijiko Kwe, she had uh, faith. She had faith in, in that she was able to, even though there was nothing there, no land, Every, anywhere, she, uh, her prayer was so firm that she visualized everything. She visualized the end and the beginning, so the beginning and the end. She visualized that, and she was so sincere in her prayer that uh, she, uh, she, she, she shed a tear. And so then he said that uh, ourselves, in, in order for us to accomplish the goal, we have to, we have to have the same sincerity. We have to have a sense of faith and conviction and certitude. And so uh, those are the two elements. But uh, you see, when, uh, when, I, when I went through all the designs, it represents all the sides of creation. They're all contained in there from the lowest to the highest side of creation. And this is what this Gigi uh, Gokwe, the sky woman, envisioned. So that's, uh, I wanted to share those two little elements because, like I said, it is a choreographed prayer that I was trying to present last night with a few technical difficulties, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah. But uh, anyway, I wanted to also share something else from uh, my little community. Uh, like, like yesterday, you know, I mentioned how the folks, they, you know, we use the sign language, uh, sign language. But uh, another thing, you know, a lot of people, uh, they, they, uh, they like to create uh, some kind of a, a song or expression so um, I'll teach you this little song. I've got the melody here, so you can get that tune in your mind. Here. Let's see. Let's see. Nihaka. Nihaka means uh, to follow. Uh, Nihaka, Malwani. Uh, 
means I sh it means just to walk, but it means that I shall walk in your ways, I shall follow in your ways. And the last, uh, last, it's just like three words in the song. It's uh, it's uh, it's Nawamanishni. Nawamanishni. Oh, that's it. That's all it is. That means I won't turn back. Just like that little uh, muskrat. Little muskrat. You didn't turn back, so that's what that refers to. That uh, you're not going to get cold feet and uh, back pedal. So anyway, so uh, I think you get it. Same tune. So we're going to start out with. Uh, we'll go start with. Uh, Blessed Bob, then we go to Baha'u'llah, then we go to Abdul Baha, then we can go to Beloved Guardian, then we can go to House of Justice, okay? By that time you'll get you'll get it down pat. <laughs> Repetition is good, it's really good. So so okay, here you all start out. You can all jump in anytime. <clears throat> Blessed Bob. Ha, ha, ha. 